Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering 612 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. We've already discussed how uh, dipoles behave in uniform magnetic fields. We're going to talk about non-uniform magnetic fields next. Okay, so since it's non-uniform, um, then the sum of the forces is not equal to zero. Okay. Uh, but in uniform fields, the sum of the forces is equal to zero. And so there's some acceleration, there's some pull in one way or the other um, due to the forces there. So you can calculate the force in non-uniform ma magnetic fields uh, as the, the current times the closed loop interval of the DL elements cross B. Okay, that's just, uh, uh, I believe that's the Biot-Savart law. Okay, well, the DL bits, um, what's the best way to explain this? So if you take a loop and you have a solenoid, and as you know, the magnetic field at the end of the solenoid kind of spreads out like a flower, um, a very uniform flower. Okay. And so the magnetic field there is non-uniform. And if you think about the parts that are over here, when it's, when it's traveling into the page, you get a QV cross B, you get a force that's, that's pointing a little bit down into the inside. Uh, hold on, let me, let me do this one more time here. So your current's going around this way. Okay. So when it's coming out of the page, so you have to start your hand out this way, and then, yeah. So you basically get a force that is pulling um, let me use a different color for the forces. It's pulling perpendicular to the magnetic field. Over here you get the same thing perpendicular. And then over here you get the same kind of, you know, force that behaves like that. There's a stretching force that tries to make it bigger. There's also a force that pulls it down. And so here this current loop, if the current is traveling that direction, experiences a net force downwards. Okay. And a good expression for how you calculate the force in a non-uniform magnetic field is you just take the gradient of the m vector dot the b vector. Okay? So you take that infinitesimal dipole um, moment and you, you dot product with the b. Okay, in this case the m vector would be pointing up different color. Red this time just to confuse you. Should have used red for the forces to keep it consistent. Okay? M vector dot b and it's the gradient of that. Okay? So here in the middle um, you know, the, the dot product, the magnetic field is, I, I believe it's, it's weakening. So as you get closer and closer to here, then the magnetic field dot, the back magnetic field, the, the, the dipole moment dot, the magnetic field is going to increase d downwards. Okay. Because the magnetic field is stronger down there. Okay. Um, so we can apply product rule number four. And write that out just in case you don't have it handy. So product rule number four says that the um, the gradient of two vectors dotted together is equal to the cross product of the first with the curl of the second. And I kind of bummed up because I should have written this lower. Plus the uh, cross product of the second with the curl of the first. Um, plus two more terms, plus we get an uh, uh, a vector dot del uh, b vector plus the b vector dot del of the a vector. And in our case, we're taking the magnetic moment dot the magnetic field, and so we're going to get an m here, a b there, <laughs> an m here and an M here, and an M here, and B stay the same, of course. So um, the trick is that um, some of these are going to be zero, and um, the ones that end up being zero are this term. Let me double check this. Okay, so the ones that end up being zero are this one, the curl of the magnetic moment. Is zero, and the other one that ends up being zero is um, this guy right here, 
So the gradient of the magnetic, the B times the gradient of the magnetic field is zero. So we end up with just these two over here. And the curl of B, if you remember the curl of B, um, Ampere's law in differential form is the current. Since we don't have any current flowing through here, we can simplify this as the force is equal to this, which is this one term, m vector dot del v vector. And so this is a nice little simplification of how the forces behave. This is a more appropriate one if you have current flowing through where the magnetic moment is. Okay. Um, so you remember that um, we had a similar thing in in electrostatics that we had the the um, the gradient of the the dipole moment dot the e vector ended up being the dipole moment dot the del with the b vector. So we ended up with a very similar thing where we had um, I believe it was the force. I could be wrong. That was back in electrostatics. So here's another parallel that we've uncovered, and you know, uh, electro. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the parallels between um, electrostatics and magnetostatics um, in the next section. So thank you for your time.